All right, good evening. All right, good evening. Uh, there was a council administration and uh, our delegation here uh, today. I'd like to start uh, first by uh, our roll call. Um, Councillor Houston and Councillor Altenoff are on personal time uh, uh, off. And uh, I'll start with the land acknowledgement. Uh, we acknowledge that we are on the lands and surrounded by water originally inhabited by our indigenous peoples who have traveled this area since time immemorial. This territory is within the lands honored by the wampum treaties agreements between the Anishinaabe, uh, Haudenosaunee, uh, the Shoni and Lenni and Lenape and allied nations to peacefully share and care for the resources around the Great Lakes. Specifically, we would like to acknowledge the presence of the Three Fires Confederacy, the Ojibwe, the Ottawa, and the Potawatomi, uh, and Huron Wendat uh, uh, peoples. We are dedicated to honoring Indigenous history and culture while remaining committed to moving forward respectfully with all First Nations, Inuit, and Metis. To the members, any a disclosure of any interest? Okay, we'll have that certainly. Uh, Clerk will have that documented. Um, but, oh, I, I did say that Councillor Altenhoff was on, on personal leave, but thank you very much. Uh, sorry about that, Councillor Altenhoff, welcome. All right, introduction and purpose of our meeting uh, is to hear comments from affected landowners on the proposed drainage works. Uh, as set out on the drainage report filed by Josh Warner, a professional engineer of R. Dobbin Engineering Inc. And that was dated on May 18, 2022 for the repair and improvements of the Salt Talbot uh, Road drain, and that's east and uh, of the uh, 12th line drain. We'll call upon our drainage superintendent, Alicia Musio, to provide us an update uh, on uh, this matter. Thank you, Your Worship. Um, on April 16th of last year, a notice was submitted to the town for the repair and improvement of the South Tubbett Road drain east and 12th line drain. Um, since then, Dobbin Engineering was appointed the drainage engineer and a PIC was held virtually on April 22nd of this year, uh, where they reviewed a draft report uh, and uh, reviewed the next steps. Um, one resident pointed out that he had a concern about the buffer strips and felt that they could be installed cheaper outside of the drainage act. Um, from there, the town advised Dobbin to proceed with the final report with the inclusion of the buffer strips. Um, on May 24th of this year, Dobbin submitted the final report, which is what we are considering today. Uh, the report provides for the clean-out portion of the South Tubbett Road Drain East to accommodate a proposed culvert, um, replacement of existing access culverts as required, future replacement specifications of remaining culverts, and the construction of a buffer strip. Uh, it also includes the cost estimate for the recommended works and the schedule of assessment. Uh, we do have two delegates here tonight who wish to speak on the matter. Um, I do remind them that if it's about their assessments, they can do so at the quarter revision, which will follow in September um, after this meeting. Um, if all goes well, we recommend that the report and specifications for the South Talbot Road Drain East and 12th Line Drain, as prepared by Josh Warner of our Dobbin Engineering, dated May 18, 2022, be received, and that consideration be given to the first and second readings of a provisional bylaw 2022-052 to adopt the drainage report in accordance with Section 42 of the Drainage Act, and further that the notice be given to all affected landowners of the Court of Revision to be held on September 13, 2022 at 6 p.m. in accordance with Section 46, subsection 1 of the Act, subject to adoption of the provisional bylaw. Um, I'll now turn it to the engineer, Josh Dobbin. All right, thank you, Alicia. Yeah, good evening. Um, yeah, I don't have a whole lot to add, but I can certainly be available for any comments or questions from landowners or uh, council members. All right, thank you, Josh. All right, then we'll go, uh, we'll go to our delegations. And first uh, on our delegation uh, is Brian Hyland, Mr. Hyland. There, I'm on mute. Is that good? You're good. <clears throat> All right. So I have a couple of points that have concerns. Um, the 
the 12th concession drain and the self Talbot East uh, drain were actually cleaned about approximately five years ago. And it was um, done under uh, the previous town of engineers guidance. Um, <clears throat> I did approach the engineer at the time of digging and my council person in my area, which would be Ms. Jobin, uh, we had an on-site meeting and the drains both were digged in a U shape, literally a U shape, which leads me to concerns because <clears throat> he expressed at that time that this was acceptable, but I'm looking at the engineer's report and it shows in great detail how the drain is to be maintained. And it's not a U-shaped. If you wanna look at the engineer's report, one of 10, at the top of every one of those, except for one, two of 10, three of 10, you'll see a cross section of drain excavation. So the 12th concession drain and the South Talbot East drain were not maintain or dug in that fashion. With that in mind, there has been a lot of sloughing. And I never knew that word existed until that um, May consultation with the previous town engineer and uh, some of the other landowners. <clears throat> and sloughing is the fact that the walls of the drain are collapsing from the U-shape. So the U-shape was approximately three feet deep and then nothing was taken off the side. It was just literally a U-shape. So with this sloughing, you've had a lot of road maintenance on the 12th drain um, with all the rock gabion. There must be a thousand meters here and there, maybe more all along that road and sloughing on, the, on uh, the my side of the 12th drain too. Also, there's been a fair amount of sloughing on the southeast drain. So with this in mind, when you, I understand it, when you pass this bylaw and with the engineer's report and how this drain should be maintained, I'm thinking then you have complete authority if you pass it today, tomorrow, you can go and maintain that drain when it was just dug five years ago and everybody already paid for that procedure. So my concern is who pays for the new repairs? Like it was just dug five years ago and the on-site meeting with uh, some of the other landowners when uh, Mr. Chapman wanted to put in a new bridge. He was told that the only way that he could get his bridge was to have an engineer's report. And, and another property owner, I think it was Mr. Farrell, he was assessed to the 12th. And if he wanted his name off the 12th assessment of that drain, he had to have an engineer's report to say that his farm didn't drain into it, even though it's quite common sense that he didn't drain into the 12th. There's no tile drains across the road, under the road, into the 12th. But anyways, so, so now you're passing an engineer's report. The drain was maintained five years ago. And not only is the drain not in the shape that the engineers suggest it should be to work properly, also buffer strips are to be incorporated. So which means to me, so you're going to strip the drain again, install buffer strips, reseed by, uh, I guess the process is spraying glue seed onto the sidewalls of the drain and putting the six foot buffer strip. It was all done five years ago, not the buffer strips, but the drain was stripped it would have been cost effective to do all the seeding then, not five years down the road, because all of a sudden, an engineer's report is triggered. And I understand the town needs to do maintenance on drains. I'm fully appreciative of that. But 
to go back five years and, and to impose a process that was already done five years ago, just I pay, the ratepayer pays, I'm on the 12th, all our land is on the 12th and Mr. Chapman. So that, that's one big concern is like, what happens next? You pass the bylaw, what's the town gonna decide? You have full authority to maintain the drain at your discretion. Nobody has to ask anybody's permission or ask the town to maintain that train. If the town engineering thinks it needs to be fixed, they're gonna fix it and I'm gonna pay. I already paid once because it's not, the drain is not like the engineer is reporting that it should be. I don't know how many, how many counselors have actually looked at the drain beside uh, Ms. Jobin. Like, do you know exactly what I'm talking about? the condition of that drain? Like, is there any appreciation of what's happening? And how common is it for drain acts or bylaws to be incorporated after the fact the drain was just cleaned five years ago? Like, you're going backwards. All of the maintenance and uh, the buffering all should have been done five years ago then. But it wasn't, it was dug in a U-shape and so now I have to have assurances that I'm not gonna be paying again right away. So that's question one. Question two, it didn't include County Road 8 draining into the 12th assessment. So I made that aware to the engineer and to my counselor. Um, and the west drain, South Talbot drain, when it meets the 12th and the east drain, um, it was just cleaned from the 12th drain towards Malden. And it was done by uh, Randy Hayes, which did an excellent job. And it almost looks exactly like the engineer's report, but that was done a year ago. And again, nothing was done concerning buffer strips or seating at the time of the dig, which would have made perfect sense because you would probably got better catches of the grass on freshly worked, moved dirt, right? So it, it, it just goes backwards. And then another point is, so Rick Chapman, in order to get his bridge in, he has to have the, Southeast drain from the 12th redug to meet grade. Approximately, I don't know, two feet, maybe the engineer could tell us two to a foot, all the way to Manning Road. Because sloughing has filled that drain in that much in the past four or five years in order to put the culvert down at grade where it has to be according to the 1980 engineer's report. And in this report, it says Mr. Chapman has to pay for that. Well, he just paid for the drain to be cleaned five years ago, but in a U shape. So I don't think that's fair either that he has to pay for that cleanage because it wasn't done properly. I think that is the truth. Um, and I've also noticed where the South Talbot West drain meets Malden. I'm gonna call it ponding. And ponding is what I say, call water to stop there at, South Mal at the Malden drain because it hasn't been cleaned. And so all your sediment from the up drains are gonna drop there. And that's what happens at the 12th drain when it met the West drain over four or five years because the West drain, South Talbot, had not been cleaned yet. And so when the South Talbot West drain was cleaned last year, I uh, talked, talked to the previous engineer and we agreed that, well, yeah, Mr. A should probably go up the 12th concession and do some proper maintenance to allow the ponding of water two to three feet deep when it touches the southwest southeast at that bridge to keep draining and he did it solved the problem and again the way he dug the drain mr hayes which i think he was correct was very closely related to what we see in the cross sections 
of the report. And so it's working, that part of it. So it, it's all draining, but now it's ponding at Malden because all those drains, the Malden probably has to be done at some time. I, I, I don't even know if it's in your schedule, but anyways, we do, when the drain was cleaned four or five years ago, it did help, but it was in a U shape. I brought concerns. I was told it's not a problem, but today it is. We can see it. So what happens? Okay. Uh... Yeah, go ahead, uh, Mr. Bartnick. Uh, thank you, Your Worship. Uh, and through you uh, uh, on behalf of council. Um, so I've had a, a number of conversations uh, today with my staff, um, uh, Alessia and Cameron, uh, as well as uh, Mr. Paglia, uh, who's retired and luckily he was not on a beach uh, somewhere in Florida. So I was able to get a hold of him uh, to get some of the past history on this. And uh, it's my understanding that uh, there was some maintenance works uh, completed back in 2016. Uh, there were some bank failures uh, that had occurred uh, due to the uh, construction practices and that those repairs uh, were completed. Uh, and I think that's where um, the uh, delegation is alluding to with respect to some of the, uh, the stone uh, that had been placed on uh, the embankment. Um, there was also uh, some additional maintenance uh, in 2017 to 2019 uh, with respect to frag and some of that cutting as well. Um, and then <clears throat> uh, there was also uh, some cleaning as he uh, indicated in 2021 by uh, Mr. Randy Hayes. Uh, and then also some works, uh, Mr. Chapman had come forward and uh, initially triggered uh, this process uh, <clears throat> for a new culvert, uh, but he was also working along with, he was working with the drainage engineer and Mr. Paglia um, on trying to get the installation of a, of a new culvert uh, for access to his site. Uh, so there are instances where we do uh, sometimes work uh, with landowners based on their timing um, and, and seeing as the engineer was involved, he had uh, the uh, proposed grading, he had the right sizing, uh, of the culvert. So that information was relayed and those works had taken place uh, before the completion of this report uh, just to help facilitate his time frame. So I think what's before you today and, and I'll ask uh, Dobbin Engineering to elaborate. Uh, I think what's before you today is a report um, that not only details uh, proposed works uh, with some culverts, but also in, in, incorporates and in, uh, the previous maintenance works that have taken place over the last number of years. Um, and so it, it's really not a report that comes forward today and says, okay, we have 155,000 in, in works that need to be completed. It's kind of a hybrid where over the last number of years, these works that have taken place and uh, these emergency works to get flow moving and, and works to excavate some of the drain to help facilitate the culvert. Um, need to be captured as part of this Section 78 report and bylaw. Um, and so I think Mr. Dobbin can allude to, you know, uh, what items remain uh, outstanding and what items have been completed. Um, with respect to uh, buffer strips, um, so buffer strips can be established through the Drainage Act, but only through a section four, which is a new a petition for a new drain or a section 78 when you trigger the engineering report. So some of the past uh, works that were completed under a section 74, which is maintenance would not give the town that authority to uh, implement the buffer strips. Uh, so that was what, that's one of the items that remains outstanding and that would be once incorporated into the bylaw would be established alongside the drain. Um, so, you know, buffer strips along drains, uh, it is a best management practice, definitely recommended by OMAFRA and uh, also by the AAFC, which is Agricultural uh, or Agriculture and Agri-Food Canada. Um, and uh, another um, 
I also wanted to highlight that you know the buffer, the installation of buff, buffer strips has been identified in uh, some of the town's own policies uh, contained within the official plan as well, uh, viewed as best man uh, best management practice to uh, help maintain the drain, uh, ensure the stability of the drain banks, uh, as well as filter out some of the overland flow uh, and sediment that uh, actually uh, makes its way to the drain overland. Uh, so hopefully that provides a little bit more clarity and, and like I mentioned, um, perhaps Dobbin Engineering could uh, elaborate more or touch on uh, some of those items more. Before I go to uh, uh, Dobbin Engineering and that, I know Councillor Jobin's been uh, uh, wanting to weigh in. Oh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Thank you, Phil, for the information and Mr. Highland and Farrows for joining us this evening. So Phil, again, you just got a little too technical and jumped over you guys eat, sleep, and breathe this. This is your, this is your kitchen. Um, but I, I need to step it back for the clarity of what originally happened six, seven years ago. Those works were done in an emergency situation based upon a call, triggered by a call, where um, a landowner, there was some blockage and some property flooding. So uh, the town went out um, under some of the act and did an emergency semi-cleaning, not a strategic to the T to a report. It was a semi to an old report, which then now going forward has triggered the new report to do a full intense cleaning as opposed to just an emergency maintenance. Can you say, can you clarify that as just the beginning step? Yes, uh, thank you through your worship to Councillor Jobin. It's, it's my understanding and speaking with Mr. Paglia today that uh, those works in 2016 were to uh, address some of the complaints that were coming in and help uh, facilitate flow in the drain. Uh, there was buildup of sediment, sloughing of uh, embankments, um, and really just trying to uh, set a positive grade uh, to get uh, water moving in that area. Um, and uh, that was the initial step. And then I believe there was, uh, like I mentioned, there was some additional maintenance and some frag that were done. And then really uh, the process triggered with um, uh, Mr. Chapman's request uh, for the installation of the culvert um, and just the uh, Dobbins engineering's uh, report to um, capture, I guess, uh, the entirety of the drain and, and, the, and the engineered uh, cross section and slope, as well as a review of the existing culverts that are on there and, and which ones uh, were in good shape and could remain and which ones uh, were in poor shape and recommended to be replaced. Thank you again, but I feel what is important for the residents to understand and myself and council to be clear on is that the original works were taken from a report in 1990 and it was kind of like a semi done job for an emergency purpose, at which time then triggered and the uh, need for additional culverts, a full assessment where now it's gonna be a full maintenance to exact drawings. Like the fact that it was emergency is important for them to understand that. It wasn't just the town said and they gave you a bill. There was an emergency situation and the town acted at the time. And just to be clear as well, nobody has paid anything for that works yet. And what needs to be clarified is how that's rolling into this, that they're not double paying for anything. Yeah, um, through you, your worship, the councillor Jobin. Um, so I had some further discussions with finance. It looked like there had been some maintenance work uh, that had been uh, assessed out, uh, some that has not, I think some that the town uh, had covered. Um, but as part of this process, um, uh, once the engineer's report uh, goes forward and we, and we have a sense of what the tender items will be, um, we'll be able to reconcile um, the works that have already taken place and the invoices uh, that have already been assessed uh, with respect to the new work taking place, uh, but definitely want to ensure council that um, steps will be taken so that property owners are not assessed or double assessed uh, for works that have already been completed and assessed out, right? And I think that's one of the major concerns, and that would be a concern of mine as well, uh, is that um, these works are not assessed uh, in duplication. 
Okay. And to the buffer as well. Like, I still feel like it's not, I can still see that they're puzzled in a, in a sense of, um, they, they didn't get a full report last time where it showed their actual hectares and what they were charged. They didn't get that. Now they're getting it in this report after we approve today's definition of going forward. Then they'll get their full assessment. Let's say it's 10 grand. So say Brian's assessment is 10 grand. They're going to say, well, you did this work and paid that, the four grand. Now you have six grand left and now you have allowances and grants. So now you're only two grand. I know those are simple numbers, but listen, yeah. I've got drains coming up. It's going to cost me a hundred grand. So if we're talking sticker shock, I, I, I'm well aware of it, but I, I just, they need to know the. So uh, through your worship to Councillor Jobin, um, the engineering, uh, the drainage re uh, engineers report uh, that's on the agenda today does identify not only um, a schedule assessment uh, for the works, uh, but also identifies a schedule of net assessment as well. So it, it looks at um, uh, the possible grants funding uh, from OMAFRA as well as uh, land allowances, right? So there are there are land allowances built in and, and I would defer to Dobbin, but I would suspect it would be um, in payment of either a working corridor uh, or perhaps a buffer strips themselves. Um, so those costs would be paid to those individual property owners that would see damage to their property for the works or loss uh, of that area for the buffer strips themselves. Um, when, it, when it comes time to uh, calculating the assessments, uh, we would look at um, you know, the, the, the total project costs and it would be for the tender that would go out uh, for the remaining works as well as some of the quotations and actual costs that that we've incurred to date, as well as the uh, ex the previous assessments that have gone out, right? So uh, definitely uh, double and triple checking with finance to make sure that uh, nobody is double billed and uh, nobody is uh, receiving a, a, a double assessment for works uh, that have taken place. Okay. I'll, I'll reserve to speak again later, thanks. Okay, thank you. <clears throat> and uh, I know that we we're um, uh, previously, uh, Councillor Jobin, I know that uh, Dublin Engineering, if you anything you want to add to that, and then I, I'll go to Mr. Highland uh, after the fact. Yeah, uh, so yeah, through your worship. So there are allowances for both uh, right of way and a working corridor. The allowances are for right of way are for the buffer strip. Uh, and kind of to try and address a couple of uh, Mr. Highland's points in terms of item number two, the County Road 8 uh, draining into the drain. Um, what we used in developing our assessment schedule on the drainage area was the previous reports, which did not have that road in it. Um, but uh, if council uh, feels that's something we should look into, we can certainly look into that and have a uh, uh, possibly a revised schedule of assessment to be approved at the uh, quarter revision in September. Um, and just as Mr. Britannic mentioned, the buffer strips can't be incorporated or can't be installed under maintenance. Um, that has to be paid through uh, a right of way under section 478 of the drainage act. Uh, and in terms of uh, having future maintenance on the drain, uh, Prior to this report, that could occur at any time as well. Um, so I think establishing a new, um, basically, section of the drain to cut those slopes and ensure there's no more uh, sloughing, I think that's uh, in the best interest of the drain long term. Uh, and I don't think, or most municipalities, and I believe the town of Tecumseh is consistent with this, is. Um, maintenance is driven on based on a request. Um, typically, they don't go out and uh, do work if there's no request. So I would think that uh, that would be the case here. Um, and the maintenance not isn't and maintenance and the cost is not going to be uh, forced on the landowners. All right, thank you, Mr. Highland. So yeah, it was uh, myself that uh, back in 2016 that asked for to look at the drain. Uh, most of the blockages were in the west portion to Malden. And so I guess I never heard the word emergency before, but um, that drain, the 12th and the South Talbot East 
where you shaped Doug, which lowered the drain, which did give us some relief. But uh, back in 2021, I guess, as it was pointed out, the west part of the drain was also cleaned, um, but in a different process. So yeah, um, now would the town then in general practice go back five years and uh, establish under, under this bylaw section 78, the buffer strips, the grassways on the sidewalls, is that what the town's gonna do? Once this bylaw is passed? Go ahead, uh, Mr. Bartnick. Uh, thank you, Your Worship, uh, to Council. Uh, so typically, um, once the bylaw is passed and the you know uh, the appeal periods have passed and we, we can go forward to tender the project, uh, we typically do move forward uh, with the completion of the recommendations within the report. Uh, this one might be a little different because uh, part of the work or some of the work has already taken place. So uh, we would probably put out a tender call for the remaining work and the remaining culverts. Uh, only and, and not the entirety of, of what has been captured as part of the 78 report. Okay, so I, I'm glad to hear that I won't be doubled assessed. Thank you. And um, the drain, I believe, the 12th is working now that the west portion of South Talbot is um, cleared. So that's a good thing. And uh, unfortunately, I still don't think it's fair for Mr. Chapman to be paying for the redig of the Southeast since he's the majority landowner on that drain to have his culvert put in. Um, that was an emergency cleanup. It sure did cause a lot of problems and costs. Well, just to allude, uh, uh, Mr. Chapman will have an opportunity during the quarter revision in September to, you know, if, if, a co if the cost is an issue uh, and so forth, that would be the, uh, uh, the venue for him to, uh, to bring that forward. Thank you. All right. Thank you, Mr. Hyland. Okay. Mr. Uh, Farrell, it's, uh, you're on. There we go. Are we are we there? Or what? Oh, you're here. Oh, okay. <laughs> um, yeah, my concern is with also with the buffer strip. Uh, um, yeah, there's allowances made there, uh, but how many years before the stitch is going to be cleaned again that I'm going to be having a buffer strip and have to maintain it and uh, the uh, amount of uh, crop that I'm losing uh, in that yeah. section yearly. Um, can be amounting to uh, a fair amount of money over the years. And then also, as uh, Brian stated, the west end of the uh, South Talbot drain between the 11th and uh, Malden Road uh, is all caved in and there's pooling there. Uh, the mushrats are working away. They're digging holes uh, under South Talbot right at the moment. Uh, which is going to be a problem there down the road with uh, the road uh, maintenance. Uh, also, it, I would say about four years ago, there were some beavers uh, moved in the vicinity and they uh, undermined all the bank and then it's caved in uh, prior to the bridge on Baldwin Road. And then also the next year, there was more beaver come in uh, right along Malden Road, uh, just past the bridge on South Talbot and Malden. So now the water is backing up down the South Talbot drain. Um, and it's all the rest of the drains are empty right now, they're dried up, but that section there has about two feet of water in it. And uh, there's being a problem there also. So, um, the beavers are gone, but uh, the problem still relies. So I'm uh, 
was just stating that uh, fact there uh, with Brian also. And uh, um, it stated there that the buffer strip was um, suggested uh, through the different uh, uh, groups or uh, whatever, uh, IRCA and whatnot, but I didn't say, or didn't have you say that it was law that they had to be there. So that was just uh, my concern. Okay. Go ahead, uh, Alicia. Thank you, Your Worship, and through you to Mr. Farrow. Um, in terms of buffer strips, as Mr. Barton had pointed out, um, it is endorsed or um, OMAFRA encourages us to use buffer strips and it's not the first time that we've done it. We've done it on a number of drains within the town. Um, as Mr. Bartnick also pointed out, it's in the town's official plan. Um, so no. we've also seen from OMAFRA that it, it helps your crop yield as well. Um, and yes, we do have an understanding that if we do install the buffer strip, you will um, maintain it. Um, and then in terms of beavers, I've been in contact with IRCA about that, and they are very concerned about um, making sure that beavers are trapped and released properly because they do cause quite a amount of damage to drains. Um, however, the drain, uh, the town really won't know about the problem unless residents tell us. Um, so if there is another issue with beavers or anything like that, please let us know. Thank you. Losing money on the buffers. Okay. Anything further? Uh, well, there's no beavers there now. It's just uh, uh, washed in and it's blocking the water, and it's going to be more of a problem for you because uh, it's going to start caving in on uh, South Talbot Road. Uh, yeah. And uh, yeah. That's uh, my concerns, so mainly with the buffer strip. Uh, um, I know that they put uh, grass seed down on other uh, ditches and it never seems to take. And uh, uh, it's left it's with a mess of weeds and it's a waste of money to be putting them down. So it's just a concern. Thank you. Sir. Okay. Thank you. Yep. All right, anything, uh, um, Alicia or, or uh, Bill and, and would like to add? Oh, Councilor Jobin's got a question. Oh, mute. Thank you, Mr. Mayor, through you. More just, um, just in my research, um, I wasn't aware that buffers were maybe um, a concern or as contentious as they have become. And I did a little research this afternoon. Um, yes, we have some on some of our properties, um, but something that I've learned is even just in the term slothing used today, it's because the crop, the equipment's getting close and you're putting pressure on those, those grounds. So you're um, encouraging slothing. Um, therefore, you're then having to have more maintenance and cleaning because the dirt is going in and new sediment is settling, creating more buildup which you just took out. So that buffer is not only for that, but also sprays and chemicals into the natural waterways. So you can look at it as an environmental aspect, also as a financial for long-term maintenance and upkeep so that you're not just throwing it back into the dirt or back into the ditch. That's just some things that I've learned. And that is why OMAFRA is um, kind of uh, supporting or maybe putting pressure on it in the act because farmers have expressed those problems with yields and flooding um, and the slothing. So that is also in their research that they've just determined and conveyed for it to be implemented as well. If that information, I hope that helps you. If not, you guys can for sure call me going forward. Okay, thank you, Councilor Jobin. <clears throat> Any further questions or comments? Okay, hearing none, then um, here. All right. Um, if there's no further questions and on, uh, from the delegation or vice versa to uh, or
our engineers. Uh, then uh, on the communications, we have two pieces. Members of uh, council, if I can have a motion to receive those two items. Uh, Councilor Altenhoff, thank you. Councilor Antonio, support. On the motion, all in favor? Oppose, if any, that is carried. Um, section H on the reports. Um, so uh, the report, uh, uh, it requests to consider engineer's report, South Talbot Road East and the 12th line. Um, that the report uh, in specification of South Talbot Road drain east and the 12th line drain as prepared by Josh Warner, professional engineer of R. Dobbin Engineering Inc. dated May 18, 2022, our drainage report be received that consideration be given uh, to the first and second readings of a provisional bylaw 2022-052, adopt the drainage report in accordance with section 42 of the Drainage Act. And further that notice be given to all affected landowners of the quarter revision to be held on September 13, 2022 at 6 p.m. in accordance with section 46-1 of the act subject to adoption of the provisional bylaw. Moved by Deputy Mayor Ricchetti and supported by Councilor Tonio. On the motion, any questions or comments? Let me hear none. All in favor? Opposed, if any? That is carried. Thank you. All right. Uh, with that, members of Council, there's no further uh, items uh, to be dealt with on this uh, on this meeting. So then, adjournment uh, is now in order. Councilor Altenhoff moved. Supported by. Um, the, uh, Councilor Tonio. On the motion, all in favor? Opposed, if any, that is carried. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Highland, and thank you, Mr. Farrell, uh, for uh, your uh, your input uh, uh, this afternoon. Okay, we have our next meeting. Uh, members of uh, Council at 6.30, actually. We're, a little, uh, we're running a little behind. Uh, and uh, so um, we'll uh, adjourn and move over to uh, to the next meeting.